Hi everyone, it's me, Peter of GuestGuide.com And as you can see, I have here the Xiaomi Mi 90 To recall, yung Xiaomi Mi 90 is the global version of the Redmi K20 Back in June, we unboxed it together with Miss Ava, the marketing manager of Xiaomi Philippines And Eman of Gadget Pilipinas And out of the box, for us, it is arguably the most impressive mid-range smartphone yet Why? Ang ganda ng design, ang taas ng specs niya, and very aggressive yung kanyang price tag First things first, the specs to recall, yung Xiaomi Mi 90 has a 6.39 inch display, 2.5 d curve display yon with Gorilla Glass Pipe Protection, and it is an AMOLED type of panel. So yung kanyang resolution is 2340 by 1080 or FHD+, yung screen aspect ratio niya is 19.5 by 9. And yung kanyang CPU, yung kanyang processor, it is using an 8 nanometer chip, the 64-bit Snapdragon 730 octa-core processor clock at 2.2 GHz. Snapdragon 730, that is the direct update, the direct upgrade of Snapdragon 710 and 712. So yung GPU nun, it is paired with Adreno 618 GPU. And then yung RAM niya, 6 GB of RAM. And then yung ROM, the storage, is internal storage niya is 64 GB and 128 GB. Uh, UFS 2.1. Sadly, wala siyang expandable memory, but yung kanyang back camera, it is a 48MP F1.75 Sony IMX582 sensor with pit up focus, CAF. And then you get a 13MP secondary camera F2.4 1.8 degree ultra wide angle sensor. And then you get an 8MP uh, F2.4 2 times telephoto lens. For selfies naman, dahil nga meron siyang pop-up camera, uh, Xiaomi managed to put their uh, 20 MP f2.2 sensor. The battery niya is also quite large at 4,000 milliamperes, and then you get 4G LTE, and then you get an in-display fingerprint scanner sa kanyang harapan sa kanyang display. Yung in-display fingerprint sensor niya is a fifth generation in-display fingerprint scanner. Yung kay Mi 90 Pro, the new Mi 90 Pro is a seventh generation, and yung kay Mi 9 SE, I, I'm correct. I think mas mabilis din yung compare dito, but at least it has this fifth generation type of in-display fingerprint scanner. And then you get the usual USB-C, and then you get the usual uh, NFC, Bluetooth 5. And I also like to note na meron siyang uh, Qualcomm WCB9375 Hi-Fi audio chip and P2I water splash resistance. All of that, yung phone na to is priced at 15990 again for the 64GB version and then 17990 for the 128GB variant. So ayun nga, this is the phone, this is the Xiaomi Mi 90. The reason number one why I think that it is the best mid-range smartphone yet is its build. Look at this build. Napakaganda na kanyang build and design. It is using a real metal and glass sandwich design. Yung kanyang frame is metal, yung kanyang back is glass, and yung kanyang harapan is glass. And what I like here is it has a unique flame-like pattern sa likuran niya. Hindi siya yung usual gradients na makikita mo with other phone brands. Xiaomi tried to be really unique with this device and I like it. And yung kanyang vertically aligned triple camera setup is properly placed in the middle. Ang ganda na kanyang placement here, very streamlined. And I also like to note na Ang ganda na kanyang finish overall, 2.5D curve yan, and it feels premium ha. Kasi dito tayo sa panahon ngayon na, alam ninyo, yung ibang mid-rangers, kahit na, minsan nga kahit 20,000 pesos na, plastic pa rin yung ginagamit na build. And then you get this full screen, full screen design. Yung full screen design niya, wala siya notch. And hindi lahat ng phones, hindi lahat ng mid-range phones, Walang notch. Ang isa pang reason bakit wala siyang notch is meron siyang, uh, meron siyang pop-up camera setup. Yung pop-up camera setup niya is very unique din kasi umiilaw, meron siyang ilaw. And I think it is used for uh, as an indicator na it is opening and it is closing na. So I like it. Overall, this, this, this phone, it has the best build and it has the best... Uh, look for me at this price point. Yung only downside lang niya is wala siyang mm, wala siyang micro SD card slot. Yung reason number to ko bakit I think that this is the phone to beat at this price point. The all-rounder, ah, all-around phone to beat is yung kanyang Multimedia Pro S. This phone has an AMOLED display. This phone has a full screen display. It has a tall 19.5 by 9 screen aspect ratio. And then, uh, over 90% of 
screen to body ratio. So, ma-maximize mo talaga yung kanyang screen real estate. And, it is perfect for viewing dahil meron siyang uh, HDR compatibility. Amulet display ka na, may HDR compatibility ka. So, if ikaw yung tipo ng tao na mahilig mag-Netflix or manood ng iba-ibang content on your phone, this phone could be the one to beat sa mid-range price tag. Don't get me wrong ha, kasi full HD resolution siya. Obviously, hindi siya magiging kasing ganda ng QHD resolution ng mga high-end ni Samsung or ni OnePlus. But, for an under 20,000 pesos phone, it is very rare to find a phone with an AMOLED display, walang notch, and I'm happy to say that this phone has that. Another thing, yung kanyang screen brightness is quite bright. Meron siya nung tinatawag nating uh, mode na pag nasa labas ka, ini-improve niya yung sunlight legibility. And then meron din siya nitong pang-protect ng mata natin when it comes to reading in the dark. Meron siyang eye comfort mode to lessen the harmful effect of blue light. Here pa rin sa multimedia, I like to note na yung kanyang single speaker sa baba is quite capable. Although it is not the loudest, don't get me wrong, I would also like it better if yung kanyang earpiece acts as a secondary speaker para medyo may stereo effect tayo. But again, this is a mid-range phone so medyo forgivable na single down firing speaker lang siya. But ang gusto ko sa kanya, meron siyang Hi-Fi chip. And based on what I experience, it can make some of my demanding inner monitors shine. For example, yung RHA ko na T10, kaya niya patakbuhin ng matino. Uh, and meron siyang 3.5mm headphone jack. Yung ibang smartphones, tinatanggalan nila yon. Ito, meron pa rin siya. Win-win for all. If, when it comes to multimedia, it can give you a pretty immersive experience with great color accuracy, good pop, and nice overall viewing experience. My reason number 3 is it has stellar cameras. Number 1, meron siyang 48 megapixels main camera. Number two, you get this uh, 13 megapixel secondary camera. And then number three, you get an 8 MP third camera. The primary camera niya is one of the best at this price point. This is a Sony IMX582. It is the Kasi ni Sony IMX586. Sony IMX586 is commonly found on high-end phones. But very minimal yung difference ni Sony IMX586 kay 582. I think sa FPS lang when it comes to 4K recording. Up to 30 FPS lang to up to 60 FPS si 586. But when it comes to the camera specs, almost the same sila. And yun nga, meron siya f1.75 aperture. And then you get the PIDAP focus. You get the CAF uh, focus. Meron din siyang AI scene detection. Ang wala niya, wala siya OIS. Wala siya OIS, pero for stabilization, it has the EIS. For the secondary lens, it has a 13MP f2.4, 124.8 degree ultrawide angle sensor. And then, yung third lens niya, again, it's an 8MP camera, f2.4 na 2 times telephoto. So, meron din siyang LED flash sa ilalim niya. I think yung LED flash niya is a dual tone LED flash. And I tested it, and it looks nice naman overall. So, when it comes to picture quality, yung primary sensor niya can take above average uh, daylight photos with really crisp details, uh, good color accuracy, and then above average sharpness. Kahit i-crop mo siya, minsan sharp pa rin yung image mo. And it doesn't have too much artifacts. And yung contrast niya, tama lang. And yung AI niya, it doesn't really oversaturate yung mga images. For indoor shots naman, medyo nag-degrade ng konti yung quality niya. But it's still above average according to my eyes. Yung bokeh mode niya is one of the best for me at this price point. Dahil nga ang ganda ng kanyang edge detection and yung kanyang background to subject separation. In low light naman, yung point and shoot niya is just okay. It's just alright. Although medyo noisy siya ng konti and you see the grain and obviously mababawasan yung kanyang dynamic range. But meron siyang secret weapon. Yun yung kanyang super night mode. Meron siyang super night mode feature that acts like a handheld long exposure for around 2 seconds yung kanyang shutter. And yun nga, because of the night mode, nag image stacking siya. And because of that image stacking, it can take better low-light images with sharp details and good colors. Although minsan, meron lang siyang artifacts and it may look unnatural for some or maybe a bit a bit cartoonish but at least it can make your images look better in the dark. And hindi pa rin naman siya OA eh. It's just okay for me. 
For selfies naman, yung 20MP camera niya is one of the better selfie cameras for me. Especially for a Xiaomi device. Kasi as we all know, yung mga preview Xiaomi phones, yung kanilang selfie medyo espasol levels na mumuti ka talaga and uh, <laughs> hindi siya ganun ka crisp and hindi siya ganun ka sharp. But with the Xiaomi Mi 90, nakorek na nila yung color. Yung kulay ko, na brown skin ako, brown skin din ako sa phone na to. I'll show you some samples here sa video na to. And that works even if you're in daylight, even if you're indoor, even if you're low light. So okay ako dun sa kanyang color accuracy. Yung sharpness niya is just fine. Although I wish that it was still a bit better. Sana mas pina ganda pa nila yung sensor na nilagay nila for the selfie camera. But again, this is a mid-ranger and I cannot really complain so much. Especially nung nilagyan ni Xiaomi ng almost flagship worthy triple camera setup sa likuran to. And okay na naman ngayon kanyang color accuracy. Yung face beauty niya is just okay. Siguro up to level 2, medyo natural ka pa tingnan. But pag inakit mo na siya, yun na, medyo espaso levels na yun. So I wouldn't recommend yung face beauty niya pag above level 2. And then yung kanyang bokeh naman is also okay. Low light selfie performance is respectable although meron siyang grain. So overall, when it comes to selfie, I'm pretty happy with this. Moving to the video, ayun na. Dito talaga ako na-impress sa kanya. Number one, it can shoot 4K at 30fps. It can shoot that 4K video using the main camera or using the ultra-wide camera. And then, yung kanyang quality is very okay to my eyes. Uh, hindi siya gaya ni Mi 9 SE na walang stabilization at 4K. Ito, may stabilization siya even at 4K. Even if it is just EIS. Even if wala siyang OIS. And yung kanyang autofocus speed pag uh, daylight is very fast, very accurate. And yung, even in low light, I tested it in low light sa Korea. Nagikot kami sa Korea. I'm with uh, Louis Diangson, my good friend from the Yucatec. And nagulat kami. Nagulat kami na ang ganda ng kanyang video even in low light. I noticed lang na yung kanyang video is uh, more saturated. Maybe if Xiaomi can see an update to improve its color accuracy, this will be the best phone for videos at its price point. For selfies naman, merong crop, obviously, but okay lang din. Uh, hindi siya as stabilized as the main cameras, but okay lang din. Uh, at least it can take selfie videos up to 1080p. Why I think the Xiaomi Mi 90 is the pinakamagandang all-around mid-range smartphone today is, again, its overall specs. Okay, you get the Snapdragon 730, 8 nanometer yon. Then you get this 6GB uh, of RAM na LPDDR4X. And then you get 64GB or 128GB of storage. Then 4000mAh of battery. So, yung overall specs niya, yung combination of specs niya, is one of the best that you will ever find at this price point. Okay, I know meron mag-argue sa inyo. Magkupoko po yung F1 pa rin ako. Or mag-honor play pa rin ako kasi flagship processors sila. Previous generation flagship processors. Okay, may point kayo. I agree. Uh, actually, if gaming yung habol mo, maybe I will still pick na po ko po na F1. But compared with the honor play na may Kirin 970, I would choose na si Mi 9T better. Kasi mas mataas yung GPU niya for gaming. Kahit may GPU turbo pa si honor play. But Ayun nga, akong hinahabol ko kasi is the overall balance. And when it comes to overall balance, I think this wins. Uh, almost same sila ng battery performance ni Pocophone F1. Lamang si Pocophone F1 when it comes to speed and gaming, but hindi naman nalalayo si Mi 90. Yung gusto ko pa sa kanya, yung as an overall smartphone, yun nga, mas maganda yung design niya, mas maganda yung kanyang build, mas premium tingnan. And then you get yung AMOLED display for an immersive overall experience that you don't get with the Pocophone F1. Don't get me wrong, ha? napakabilis na Pocophone F1 and napakaganda niya for its price tag. I think it's around 14,000 pesos na lang ngayon. But as an overall mid-ranger, I will still pick the Mi 90. Going back sa kanyang performance, niyayabang din pala ni Xiaomi na meron siyang dual turbo acceleration. Yung dual turbo acceleration na yun supports the fragmentation, input-output optimization, app launch speed optimization, and ginagarantee niya na it can 
provide a smooth performance even after 18 months. It kind of reminds me of the Born Fast, Stay Fast ni Huawei with their smartphones. And I'm glad that Xiaomi is doing that because as we all know, I want a phone that can last with me for a long time. Because ibang devices, pag tumatagal na, bumabagal na. But with Xiaomi, they guarantee na even after 18 months, your phone is still smooth. I have yet to test that dahil 2 months pa lang ako with this phone. But so far, I can guarantee you na hindi siya bumabagal with my daily tasks like opening Facebook, playing some games, listening to music, taking photos, and even if uh, I play games na medyo demanding like the NBA 2K19. Kahit nga mag-open ako ng multiple apps, kasi yung 6 gigabytes of RAM niya is actually enough na. Yung software naman nito is using the MIUI 10 based on Android Pie and it is one of the cleanest looking UI around. And I also like na meron na siyang dark mode. So dark mode everywhere. Although hindi pa talaga siya system wide na dark mode. Hindi pa niya na dark mode yung iba kong apps. Ayun nga, dami niya rin may mga gestures, gestures siya. And alam niyo naman na si MIUI is one of the cleanest and one of the best skins that you can get on an Android device. However, meron lang ako isang issue sa kanya. May run siyang ads. I know they want to earn somewhere because napakamura na nga ng phones nila. But maybe if they can remove that ads, this phone, I would have liked it so much better. I think I've mentioned na most of the things that made this phone great. But I would also like to note na hindi siya perfect. Meron siyang few weaknesses. Number one, wala siyang stereo speakers. Number two, wala siyang... Uh, expandable storage, wala siyang micro SD card slot. It would have been better if meron siyang micro SD card slot, obviously. And then meron siyang ads sa ibang apps niya. To end this video, do you think I will recommend the Xiaomi Mi 90 to you? My answer is yes. A resounding yes. Especially if your budget is 16,000 pesos to 18,000 pesos. To my eyes and maybe to the eyes of many, it is the best all-rounder for the price. It may not have the fastest processor that belongs to the Pocophone F1 by Xiaomi Ren under 20,000 pesos, but yung kanyang Snapdragon 730 chipset is more than enough. Again, it is more than enough for most. And mas balanced siya compared to all other phones that I've seen. Mabilis na siya, maganda pa yung design, may mabilis na in-display fingerprint scanner, you get this AMOLED display na all-view display, walang notch, manipis na bezels, and meron siyang pop-up camera na matino. And then you get the goodness of its triple camera setup. In triple camera setup niya is one of the best that I've seen and I've tested maybe even if under 25,000 pesos price range. Again and again and again, Xiaomi Mi 90 is one of the best mid-range phone that your money can buy for 16,000 to 18,000 pesos price range. That's it! It's me, Peter of GuessGuide.com uh, Comment lang kayo if you have comments, obviously. And if you like this video, maybe you can share it with your friends as well. Thank you so much for watching and bye-bye!